by now in complex analysis, we've talked a lot about where functions are analytic. And most recently, we began to start to pay attention to where functions are no longer analytic. And we called those isolated singularities. And we talked about the three different kinds of isolated singularities, poles, essential singularities, and removable singularities. Well, these singularities that we are talking about have something called residues. And today we're going to talk about finding residues with what I will call the first method, which is mainly used for essential singularities. This is complex analysis by a physicist, and let's talk about our first method for finding residues of isolated singularities. So residues are a little bit confusing. What is a residue? Well, a residue is just something that we attribute to an isolated singularity in, in our case. We're only going to deal with isolated singularities. There are other kinds of singularities, but for the sake of this video and this video series, we're just going to deal with isolated singularities for the time being. The isolated singularity of a function has this quantity or this value called a residue. And we get that with the following. The residue of our function at the singularity, which is z0, is equal to the negative one coefficient of our Laurent series. What does this mean? Well, when we expand out a function with an isolated singularity, we want to look for its z to the minus one term. When we do that, the coefficient associated with that is what we call our residue. Now this is a really big deal because previously our singularities only gave us problems. If you recall, if we want to differentiate or integrate a complex function, we can't do that unless it's analytic. And so these, isol these isolated singularities just present problems. But now these isolated singularities actually have a little bit of meaning. In future videos, we'll understand what the meaning actually is. But first, we need to understand how to get these residues. Now this method of expanding our function in the Laurent series and looking for the z to the minus one term can be used to find the residue of a singularity for a function with any isolated singularities. But this is most commonly used for essential singularities. What about removable singularities though, you might be asking? A function with a removable singularity is a function with an isolated singularity that once we expand it in its Laurent series removes the singularity so we only have positive terms of z or positive power so we only have positive powers of z there are no negative powers of z in this so there's no c then there's no negative one coefficient so the residue of this has to be zero let's do some examples though here we have the function e to the one per z. I've used this function all the time, and we know this is an essential singularity with the following Laurent series. We know that this also has the singularity at z equals zero. And so if we want to find the residue of this singularity at z equals zero, we'll take the residue at z equals zero of our function e to the one per z and that is just going to be our c to the minus one coefficient. So we're going to look for our, our z to the minus one term, which happens to be this one right here, which is one per z. So our residue here is one. Again, this is really important because before this singularity gave us a problem. Now this singularity actually has a little bit of meaning because we found this quantity called a residue. Here's another example. We have z squared times sine of one per z. Really clearly here, there's a singularity at z equals zero again. So we can expand this in a Laurent series. And here you can see that this is again an essential singularity. We seem to have our negative powers of z increasing infinitely with our series. So if we want to find the residue of this function about its singularity at z0, we're going to look again for our c to the minus 1 coefficient, which happens to be this term right here. 
which is 1 on 3 factorial, which is just 1 sixth. Again, this is a really important concept here because now this singularity is not just giving us a problem. There's an associated value to this. And again, we'll discover how we can use these values in the next coming videos in this series. For our last example, let's look at sine z per z. If you don't recall this function, we clearly have a singularity at z equals zero, and so we can expand this. Well, there are no negative terms of z here, so the residue z equals zero of sine z per z equals zero, and that's because this is a removable singularity, and once we expand this complex function, our singularity disappears in the Laurent series expansion. Now remember, this is just the first method of finding residues. We still have not even touched poles, which is another type of isolated singularity. And we'll cover that in method number two. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away in the comment section down below. And I hope to see you again next time.